stop motion characters first crashed onto the big screen in Willis O'Brien's landmark silent film The Lost World. This dinosaur fantasy adventure was the earliest chance that audiences had to see stop motion effects integrated with live action. In the decades that followed, moviegoers were treated to all kinds of creations. By the 1980s, stop motion was at its peak. As a kid, whenever I saw any of these monsters, I was instantly hooked. And back then, stop motion wasn't just in movies, it was everywhere. You could find it in Saturday morning TV, it was in music videos, and it was used in commercials to sell everything from the latest cereal to Domino's Pizza. Years later, I'm still doing my best to avoid the noise. In more recent times, stop motion has continued in full length films. However, creature work for modern live action is typically handled with CGI. But today, we'll show some love to the classic stop motion creatures of the past. What follows are 10 of my favorite stop motion movie characters. Let's begin with the work of legendary special effects master Ray Harryhausen and his iconic skeleton sword battle from Jason and the Argonauts. These skeletons, which are also known as Children of the Hydra's Teeth, tapped into some deep-seated fears. There's something fundamentally disturbing about the undead springing to life and attacking the living. These skeletons were a lot more menacing than your typical Saturday morning cartoon villains who posed very little threat. What? This was an elaborate battle that featured seven skeletons armed with shields and swords. The choreography alone is something you have to appreciate. Everything had to be perfectly synchronized with the actor's movements. Each skeleton had five appendages, all of which had to be moved for each frame of film. This sequence was so time consuming, there were days Harryhausen only managed to produce 13 or 14 frames, which translates to less than a second of screen time a day. The sequence ended up taking four and a half months to complete, but as you can see, it was well worth it. Next up on my list is the Demon Lord, a chilling giant that appears in the 1987 cult horror, The Gate. For those of you unfamiliar with The Gate, it's a dark story about suburban kids who accidentally unleash demons from a hole in their backyard. The climax features the hellish stop motion creature you see right here. The mastermind behind the Demon Lord was another special effects legend, Randy Cook. Prior to his work on The Gate, Randy worked on The Thing, Ghostbusters, and Fright Night, so he already had an impressive resume. Eventually, he went on to work on the Lord of the Rings trilogy. The Gate featured great practical effects for its time, and considering the moderate budget, the Demon Lord was very impressive. With its eerie expression and its giant serpent-like body, this monstrosity is the stuff of nightmares. And speaking of nightmares, I also wanted to mention the mini demons. They were visualized through a combination of forced perspective, actors in rubber suits, and stop motion. Up next is another one of Harryhausen's classic creations, the Ymir from the 1957 sci-fi horror, 20 Million Miles to Earth. Grandpa? This reptilian creature initially appears small and seemingly harmless. The Ymir, which originates from Venus, eventually begins to grow due to the oxygen in our planet's atmosphere. In fact, it grows to the size of your common B-movie monster, and that's where the fun really begins. The highlights of the film are the creature facing off against an elephant and eventually an entire army. The animation and design is flawless throughout every stage of its growth, and all of Harryhausen's trademark mannerisms and movements are on display. Interestingly, Harryhausen's original concept for the Ymir was a giant cyclops. And that brings us to the next creature on our list. After completing 20 Million Miles to Earth, Harryhausen wanted to move on from creature features based in a modern era and explore mythological beasts from the past. The seventh voyage of Sinbad fits that bill. This was the first of a trilogy of Sinbad films that featured countless mythic creatures throughout. As noted, the actual design was originally intended for the Ymir, so the Cyclops is like a distant cousin. Harryhausen even built the model of the Cyclops over the Ymir's skeletal armature. The furry goat-like legs on the creature also gave them an uncanny quality. One reason the creature has legs like this is so audiences wouldn't mistake it for a man in a suit. 
a misconception which came up from time to time. The Cyclops is a brute who towers over our heroes, and if you cross their path you may end up getting a boulder hurled in your direction, or you can end up getting mashed to death by a tree. And they have a taste for human blood, which is evident here. This Cyclops is licking his chops like he's at a Saturday barbecue. Next on our list is the Ebersisk from the 1988 fantasy adventure Willow. This ferocious creature is a two-headed, fire-breathing dragon. The monster feels like it was crafted in the spirit of the classic stop-motion creatures which came before, but it also had a modern twist. One of the things that always fascinated me as a kid was the strange and grotesque birth of the creature. When our hero Willow attempts to use magic to get rid of a troll, his spell backfires badly. The creature goes through a transformation and soon goes into this two-headed dragon we see right here. Willow was a George Lucas project, so the legendary effects team at ILM put a ton of work into this beast. It's been noted that the dragon's head design is actually a mashup of a shark and an elephant seal, a blend that gave the creature distinct features. The sheer scale of the dragon is what made it frightening. Well, that and its ability to incinerate anyone. The sculpt for the Ebersisk was created by Randy Dutra, and the creature effects were overseen by special effects pioneer Phil Tippett. Speaking of Tippett, that brings us to the next entry on our list. Fellow executives, it gives me great pleasure to introduce you to the future of law enforcement. Ed 209. When Phil Tippett and his team unveiled this heavily armed enforcement droid, it left an impression. The Ed 209 was intimidating as hell, but it was also a malfunctioning disaster. As was the case with the Cyclops, the designer of Ed 209, Craig Hayes, wanted to avoid the perception of the Ed 209 being a man in a suit, especially since the hero of the movie Robocop was a man in a suit. With that in mind, Ed 209 was designed to be top heavy, with its hips offset and featured tons of intricate moving parts. The inspiration for the overall look of the Ed 209 was a killer whale. Speaking of animals, the growls we hear from Ed 209 was actually the recording of a black leopard. What's most disturbing about this so-called peacekeeping machine is that it's unintentionally comedic and glitchy, and that makes it all the more deadly. It can't handle a flight of stairs or even fit through most doors, but the over-the-top inefficiency was basically the point. It's the embodiment of a big, clunky, dangerous product. It's not me that's armed, it's harmless! It's a killer and I saw it! Next is one of the lesser appreciated killer robots in film history, the ultra-violent cyborg Kane, also known as Robocop 2. In human form, Kane was a sadistic, insane drug lord. Following his demise, his brain was inserted into the cyborg Robocop 2. Talk about a cool origin. According to Phil Tippett, in terms of design, the goal was to make Kane feel like an amped up bodybuilder, which explains his Johnny Bravo physique. Once again, Craig Hayes stepped in to visualize Robocop's new adversary. Hayes knocked it out of the park. When it comes to weaponry, the creative team took the Swiss Army Knife approach. Kane was equipped with everything under the sun. Grappling claws, welding rigs, and of course, its Gatling gun, a six-barrel rotary cannon. And I'm sure he can also core an apple. Phil Tippett himself said Kane was one of the most difficult stop-motion characters he ever had to deal with. But after eight animation units worked around the clock for four months, the work was completed. Despite all the headaches, the villain we actually saw on screen was as memorable as ever. My next pick is another Harryhausen creature, Medusa, from Clash of the Titans. Medusa was cursed by the goddess Aphrodite and turned into a Gorgon. A horrific monster with snakes instead of hair and a rattlesnake tail. Medusa is so hideous that anyone who looks at her turns to stone. That idea alone is something that disturbed me as a kid. She also had a bow and arrows, which made her all the more deadly. Interestingly, Medusa's grisly appearance and her serpent-like body isn't her traditional representation. Nevertheless, Harryhausen's incarnation went on to become her prevailing look. Typically, when the character shows up anywhere, such as the 2010 Clash of the Titans remake, or video games like Castlevania or Assassin's Creed, she tends to retain Harryhausen's infamous snake-like qualities and harsher appearance. 
Up next is Mighty Joe Young. Special effects pioneer Willis O'Brien served as supervisor of stop motion on the film and handled the designs and storyboards. But this was Ray Harryhausen's baby all the way. He produced the majority of the animation. And in this film, we get tons of action. The story focuses on Jill Young, who has taken care of Joe his entire life. But when Hollywood promoter Max O'Hara arrives on the scene, all he sees is a gold mine. Jill and Joe end up in America where Joe is tragically exploited. Eventually Joe breaks free and chaos ensues. Of all the creatures on my list, Joe might be the one with the most personality. Perhaps that's because overall this film was lighter in tone. That allowed for Joe to have comedic moments from time to time. The models which were built by Marcel Delgado were capable of pulling off very subtle gestures, all of which helped bring the character to life. Ultimately, the special effects sequences took 14 months to complete. It was totally worth it. As some of you may know, I'm a big fan of Mighty Joe Young. This is one you have to check out if you haven't already. Before we go on to my number one pick, I wanted to quickly run through some honorable mentions. to the king baby number one on my list is the original king kong from 1933 this is a classic beauty and a beast story a beast in this case being the iconic kong in the film he's captured and taken to new york but when kong escapes all hell breaks loose in the big apple this entire film makes for an ideal setup for countless special effects sequences kong had a mean streak Anyone who invaded his territory or dared to steal his woman was in for a world of hurt. The legendary special effects pioneer Willis O'Brien and his team were the creative geniuses behind Kong, including young Ray Harryhausen who was Willis O'Brien's protege. One of O'Brien's key crew members was Linwood G. Dunn, who took care of the optical composites for King Kong and later Son of Kong. Kong's stop motion armatures were animated under the supervision of O'Brien himself. O'Brien spent years developing cutting edge techniques. His innovations were showcased in this film. There were actually four stop motion models built for animation purposes. One was a less costly lead and fur model, ideal for tossing Kong off the Empire State Building. But the other three were higher quality and made out of aluminum, latex, and foam rubber. And if you ever laid awake at night wondering what Kong's fur was made of, well, it was rabbit fur. One of the most popular scenes in the film is when Kong battles a T-Rex. It's a grisly, violent fight to the death. O'Brien and his crew worked on that sequence alone for seven weeks. It's pretty clear why King Kong served as an inspiration for so many effects artists in the field. The eighth wonder of the world has definitely stood the test of time. Stop motion has come a long way over the years. Although the technique may no longer be the go-to for creature effects, the legacy and inspiration of decades worth of iconic characters remains with us. Now, for all you fellow stop motion fans out there, I know there's tons of other awesome creatures and robots, so let me know which ones are your favorites. Thanks for watching everyone. If you enjoyed this, hit that like button, hit that sub button, and remember, always check to see who or what is knocking before you open the door. <laughs>